China's exports experienced a nearly 10% year-on-year drop in December of the previous year, marking the third consecutive monthly decline and the most significant drop since early 2020. This export decline trend has continued into 2023. Chinese authorities have officially acknowledged this trend, with the Director General of the Department of Foreign Trade of China's Ministry of Commerce admitting at a press conference that there has been a shift from last year's supply chain blockage and capacity issues to the current weakening foreign demand and declining orders. Furthermore, many Chinese migrant workers returned from a two-week-long Chinese New Year holiday on January 23rd, only to be faced with additional factory closures due to the economic slowdown. Some well-known companies, like the U.S.-funded semiconductor company ATC China in Shanghai, have announced extended holiday breaks due to lost orders caused by the downturn in the chip market. Another company, Rong Technology Company Limited, plans to be on holiday for three consecutive months from February to May. So 也没有信心找场了真的我感觉这么大的一个工业区就剩下我一个在找场了别人的话都已经失去信心了要么就跑路了要么就回家了要么就公园躺平了他们都不想找了因为他们知道找了也白找都没什么厂招工了走的也没用
This seems like a big joke. After three years of hard struggle, not only have we not made any money, but we've also lost all our savings. In order to survive, we had to lay off more than two-thirds of our staff. I can't even bear to think about those brothers who had been with me for more than ten years. After the Chinese New Year, I thought the economic winter had passed. I watched official media news that talked about various good economic policies, and I believed that the spring for our brass door factory would come. So I called the brothers back, ready to work hard, and turned three years of frustration into energy. Now the brothers are all here, but where are the orders? Where did the orders go? Are you receiving a lot of orders now that we don't need to wear masks? The market should be picking up, and there should be more orders. However, we don't feel busy in the equipment procurement business lately. The equipment is all here, but nothing is being sold and no money is being made. People are panicking. After 16 years in the shoe business, I've never seen a year as bad as this one. This year, many small business owners, including Wenji, have left. There are several hundreds of them. The change in the exchange rate is making matters worse for Chinese bosses who already have minimal profits. In 2023, the exchange rate of the U.S. dollar to the RMB is 6.7 compared to last year's rate of more than 7. It has fallen significantly. If transactions or deliveries are based on last year's negotiated prices, I believe many people experienced losses last year due to the high exchange rate. We had to lower prices to attract customers. Since we negotiated prices with customers last year, increasing prices now might drive them away. Therefore, we are exploring ways to communicate with suppliers to see if they can reduce the purchase price slightly, offset the loss. On the customer side, we can explain the situation and implement a nominal price increase, but we will have to absorb the rest of the loss gradually. China's foreign trade exports continue to decline, posing a significant challenge for many foreign trade businesses as they struggle to determine if they can survive. I'm uncertain about my future in the face of various trends, order cancellations, rent payments, and the need to pay workers. Despite having more than 10 years of experience in foreign trade, this is the first time I've encountered such a situation. It must be acknowledged that the past few years' epidemics have wreaked havoc on the industry, eroding people's confidence in it. This is the current state of the manufacturing industry, and I am finding it increasingly difficult to cope. Currently, we are retaining more than 30 employees with an average salary of 5,000 yen per employee. Daily expenses, including factory rent and various other costs, exceed 10,000 yen. I'm determined not to halt production, given the effort I've put in over the years. However, if this situation continues, I'm unsure when it will end. The expenses are simply overwhelming, and our hard-earned savings from the past few years have almost been depleted. It feels like we've gone back to a decade ago in just one day. Shenzhen, once known as a bustling working city in China, is experiencing a change. After the Chinese New Year holiday, numerous young people from small cities and villages returned to Shenzhen in search of factory jobs. This bus station in Shenzhen, once teeming with activity and surrounded by employment agencies, is now desolate. People wander around carrying their luggage, desperately searching for jobs, but opportunities are scarce. I'm currently at the entrance of the Jiangong New Industrial Zone. The crowds are back, and there are job seekers everywhere. As you saw earlier, Shenzhen is teeming with people searching for employment, whether it's the bus platform, the entrance to the industrial area, or park benches under the bridge. Every corner is packed with job seekers. However, despite the throngs of people, job opportunities are scarce. There aren't many factories in need of workers. So for those who haven't left for other places, it's best not to come here for the time being. The once vibrant cities in Guangdong province have now succumbed to a sense of desolation. Areas where migrant workers used to reside are becoming less crowded, and in many places, emptiness prevails. Yes, you heard it right, empty. Take a look at this entire apartment building. It remains unoccupied no matter how low the rent goes, even the factory dormitory. Once bustling with workers and laundry hanging on the balconies, now sits largely vacant. Few people live there anymore. A friend of mine mentioned that wages in Dongguan have dropped significantly, and many can only secure low-paying jobs. There isn't much work available, and overtime opportunities are scarce. 
making people reluctant to come to work in Dongguan. Another friend who rents out properties told me that finding jobs has become exceptionally challenging for those who come here to work. As a result, he's been forced to surrender rental properties. Several factors contribute to this situation. Firstly, many factories have reduced their workers' wages, and some people are willing to accept lower pay than before. Secondly, several prominent companies have closed down. Just a few days ago, a local toy factory with thousands of employees shut its doors. This area, once filled with factories and plants, is now marked for demolition. Many people may recall these factories that are now disappearing. As you can see, this entire industrial area is scheduled for demolition and it covers a vast expanse. The front section is earmarked for demolition and it's currently vacant. The opposite side is also destined for demolition, while this area has already undergone demolition. What used to be an electronics factory is now being dismantled. In addition to the increasing trend of supply chains moving out of China, the U.S. economic situation directly impacts China's exports. The U.S. and China have had a significant trade deficit for years. According to statistics from the U.S. Department of Commerce, on February 7 this year, the U.S. trade deficit with China in 2022 amounted to $382.9 billion. Now, Americans are shifting their spending towards essentials like food, fuel, and services due to rising inflation. This has diminished demand for many products, resulting in retailers being left with surplus inventory. Whether American consumers continue to spend, depleting these inventories and rekindling demand for imports, or if the U.S. economy continues to contract, will significantly affect China's foreign trade industry. Currently, orders are exceptionally low, and one of the OEM giants, Shenzhou International Corporation Limited, has seen a two-thirds reduction in its workforce. Many employees report reduced overtime, longer holidays, and halted jobs. The primary reason remains a decline in orders. Notably, major brands like Nike and Puma, which account for 84% of Shenzhou International's business, have seen their product prices skyrocket, affecting consumer demand. These customers, once an advantage, have now become a vulnerability for Shenzhou International amid the economic downturn. Faced with a sharp decline in orders from foreign brands, Shenzhou International has turned to domestic alternatives, including Anta and others. Brands are exploring this change as a potential new path forward. The contraction of the U.S. economy will also have repercussions on international shipping. Companies like Amazon.com, Target, and Home Depot are some of the shipping industry's largest customers. The future of these major customers is now clouded with uncertainty, which in turn casts a shadow over the future of China's ports and shipping industry. Furthermore, on February 7th of this year, the U.S. Department of Commerce announced that the 2022 foreign trade data revealed a significant shift. For the first time since 2019, the U.S. imported $538.8 billion worth of products from China in 2022, which is lower than the $553 billion worth of imports from EU countries. This marks China's loss of its position as the top trading nation for the U.S. This outcome is a result of the Beijing government's strict COVID-0 policy over the past three years, causing the sources of U.S. supply to become more diversified, particularly with increased supply from other Asian countries. The global shift in industry has caused foreign companies in China to move their production lines to Southeast Asia and India. This has resulted in a significant decrease in purchase orders for raw materials and components from Chinese local businesses, profoundly impacting China's economy. The relocation of foreign companies has led to widespread job losses and significant income reductions for those still employed, contributing to a contraction in China's domestic market and imposing substantial challenges on social stability. A prominent electronics manufacturer, SCON recently announced its production line shift during a media interview. Foxconn, a major Apple supplier, disclosed its move of part of its production line to Mexico and Vietnam in a BBC interview, further intensifying the economic repercussions of this industrial chain shift.
This shift may signal a broader trend of companies moving their production lines out of China. Foxconn's plans to invest $500 million in establishing a manufacturing plant in the Indian state of Telangana underscore its commitment to expanding in the South Asian market. The company already manufactures iPhones in India and recently secured a bid to produce AirPods in the country. Reports indicate that Foxconn acquired land in Bengaluru for $37 million in May and received approval from the Karnataka government to invest $968 million in the state. This move by Foxconn is emblematic of the broader trend of foreign-funded companies disengaging from China, making it increasingly challenging for China to boost its exports. As foreign capital continues to exit mainland China, it becomes advisable for Chinese companies to explore alternative options. Apple CEO Tim Cook emphasized the significance of India's burgeoning market and declared India, Brazil, and Mexico as pivotal markets for Apple, notably excluding China from this conversation. Burtz also revealed a significant reduction in the workforce of Foxconn Zhengzhou plant, once employing 300,000, which has now decreased to 60,000 to 70,000 employees. The vicinity surrounding the Junjo Foxconn plant is transforming into an abandoned area. Once vibrant commercial streets are now deserted and most shops have closed, Chinese President Xi Jinping has been emphasizing the promotion of economic growth and recommends shifting the focus from exports to domestic demand. Meanwhile, Li Chang, the premier of the state council, has recently directed efforts to boost trade through all possible means. However, domestic demand in China has substantially declined due to various political factors. Xi Jinping's ambitious foreign policies and assertive wolf warrior diplomacy make it challenging to increase exports as international relationships become strained. His consolidation of power might lead to a misdiagnosis of China's economic issues and fewer financial resources at his disposal. Present-day China, whether in industry, commerce, or the service sectors, is grappling with an unparalleled predicament. This pressure is particularly visible in the real estate market, where industrial buildings are increasingly vacant. In Suzhou, numerous enterprises have moved out, leaving behind numerous empty factories with no prospective occupants. In Shenzhen, upscale office buildings stand abandoned and roadside restaurants and various shops are available for transfer. The absence of foreign orders has created challenges for China in providing for its own citizens. June, traditionally a robust sales period, witnessed an unprecedented sales slump in China. Small and medium-sized businesses are finding it increasingly difficult to manage rising production costs and dwindling orders. Many business owners are under severe mental strain, and some are even opting to shut down their companies. An increasing number of orders are being redirected to places like Vietnam and India, and previously, bustling factories are gradually becoming relics of the past. China's economic challenges extend beyond the industrial sector, impacting commerce and various other sectors as well. Enterprises are grappling with the dual challenges of rising production costs and declining orders. This confluence of factors is causing many business owners to experience extreme mental strain, with some opting to shut down their companies. The situation is exacerbated by the shifting of a significant number of orders to places like Vietnam and India, leading to once thriving factories becoming relics of the past. The situation in China is causing severe distress for enterprise owners, with those employing more than 100 people experiencing extreme anxiety. Business owners with over a thousand employees are feeling like they are barely surviving, while those employing over 10,000 are facing the threat of disappearing entirely. Employees across the board are concerned about potential layoff. High performing individuals are anxious about meeting their performance goals, and even successful business owners are stressed due to intense competition that leaves little room for profit. Over the past four decades, the world has seen China. However, China's actions, including technology theft, the pursuit of shortcuts, and an overbearing approach, are gradually prompting a shift in global supply chains. 
This shift could potentially push the Chinese people back to the poverty they experienced a century ago. Consequently, some are beginning to question whether it's time to overthrow the Chinese Communist Party, which could allow the Chinese people to return to the mainstream of human civilization.